Good morning. I am Mr. H. Thank you for joining me. If you will be studying calculus in your educational career, it is very likely you'll be doing some physics classes as well. So let this be a good introduction video here with regards to linear motion. We know linear motion is a movement along a straight line. And we'll be looking at everything here with regards to both algebraic techniques, which are the basic physics techniques and calculus. Linear motion. Before we do this first question, we should remember this specific fact, which I've presented several times before in a variety of videos, which I will add links to in the information for this video. And you can always review those videos. The most beneficial hint and tip I can provide you is this. If you have a position function of an object, you can do its derivative and you can end at the velocity function. If you do the derivative of this, remember in all instances, these are equations of a function. You do the derivative of velocity, you end at the acceleration function. If, however, you want to work in the backwards route because your question is in that form, then you can do the integral of your acceleration and end at the velocity. You can do the integral of your velocity function and end at the position function. So this right here is what I call the best loop, which I have understood to be the case. Because if you are having difficulty solving simple physics questions, whether it be related to your disinterest in that subject or your lack of conceptual knowledge, if you can understand and memorize this loop, it will make these type of questions very easy for you. So let's put this into effect with this first question. From rest, an object accelerates constantly over the time interval 0 to 10. We can let's assume that these are in terms of seconds. All right, from rest, an object is accelerating constantly over 10 seconds at 10 meters per second square. You know, this here is an acceleration value. We have to find the final velocity and the final position of this object. Again, we'll be doing this in the, in the form of algebra, the physics way, and we'll do this in the calculus way. Though one may say they're both the same way, but I'm making this distinction because not everyone does it both ways. So why not we add that distinction? From rest, we know at rest an object has no velocity because it's not moving, so we know it's zero meters per second. And at rest, an object has not moved. Its initial position must be zero meters. You're starting from rest. There is no movement, so there's no position. What are the basic formulas we know? And we're doing this now the basic physics and algebra way. We, we know one formula is final velocity is always equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. That's one formula. We also know that the final position of an object is always equal to the initial position of an object plus the initial velocity times time plus half a t square. I've presented two videos where we have derived these equations using calculus and you would be good to review those videos. It would make procedures such as this very easy for you because you'll start thinking of these type of questions in an another easier way, which is a calculus way. If this is the information we have, let's plug it in and find starting with the final velocity. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity, which is zero, plus acceleration, which happens to be 10. Forget the units for right now, 10 meters per second squared times time, 10. And we know the final velocity will be 100 meters per second. Easy, right? What about the final position, which we have to find? Final position will equal to the initial position, zero plus initial velocity times time, zero times 10 plus half times acceleration 10 times time interval 10 square. This zeroes out, this zeroes out, you're only looking over here and let's get that value. We have 10 square times 10 divided by two, we have 500 meters. And you would probably have to provide a good direction over here. If supposing the object accelerated constantly towards east, we can say 500 meters east, all right? It has moved 500 meters east or 500 meters right from its initial position. So this right here is using the algebra way or the physics way, and it would seemingly look easy. But let me present you the same way when we do it using calculus, and that's the way I recommend, because as these type of questions get harder, this seemingly easy way will become more confusing and the calculus way will become more easy. So here's the calculus way of doing it. We have an object which accelerates constantly. We have an acceleration provided of 10, and I told you, using that loop, the lower loop, from acceleration to velocity to position. If you have an acceleration provided, you do its integral, you'll end at the velocity function, and I do have an acceleration provided, it's 10. I'm looking at the integral of 10, 
with regards to dt and you know when you do this a hidden antiderivative comes through and my answer is 10t and that's the velocity function 10t meters per second let's do this first question what's the final velocity the final velocity at 10 seconds is no different than you doing 10 times 10 because you're plugging everything right into this right you're saying velocity at times 10 is equal to 10 times 10 which is 100 meters per second confirming the answer we had originally we had 100 now let's look at the position question right here if we have the velocity function and you do its integral because it's from acceleration to velocity to position you do the integral of this velocity function you can arrive at the position function if you do the velocity function integral you will arrive at the position function and what is it 10 t dt you'll have 10 t square over 2 which is 5 t square think about it you're looking here at your variable this 10 could have very well been pushed out as a coefficient t integral is t square over 2 yeah 5 t square and now we, we know this right here is equal to your position function we have to find the final position we know the initial position is 0 all you have to do at time 10 position at time 10 is equal to everything placed into this 5 t square which is what 5 times time which is 10 and square and what do we get we get 500 meters and we'll just say due east and again we've confirmed it this answer came out the same as the other way and this came out the same as the other way and they're both good answers so keep in mind that the calculus way seemingly might seem hard to someone who's not in familiar with integral calculus but it actually ends up being just as easy if not easier than the other way let's look at another question okay we have this object which is traveling east at 10 meters per second and it accelerates and you can say at a constant rate of 15 meters per second square over 15 seconds we have to find the final velocity and the final position of this object what do we know we know the initial velocity here is where it's going at in terms of the speed it's 10 meters per second if this is exactly when you're beginning to measure this object in terms of this experiment the initial position might as well be zero meters because you're beginning to measure it from this point where this experiment begins so zero meters we're going to do things here the algebra the basic physics way we have these equations vf is equal to vo initial velocity plus at we also know that the final position is equal to initial position which usually is zero so you don't even have to bring that in plus initial velocity times time plus half a t square let's look at everything here in terms of the final velocity the final velocity is equal to initial velocity which is 10 plus acceleration which is 15 times 15 which is the time interval involved all you gotta do is that computation 15 times 15 plus 10 what do we get we get 235 235 meters per second is the final velocity of the object what about the final position initial position for the purpose of this experiment is zero plus 10 times the time involved is 15 seconds initial velocity was 10 we, we have that mentioned plus half times 15 which is the acceleration and 15 square we just have to do this and we can run it through the calculator we get a final position of 1837.5 meters due east okay that's our final answers over here we have one answer here one answer here let's do the calculus way if we know we're starting here with an acceleration function right and we did its integral we'll end up with the velocity function and let's do that what is our acceleration function we know that the acceleration here is 15 so you're just doing integral of 15 meters per second square ignore the units and when we do the integral of this you just get 15 t but you have to add to that your original velocity which is 10 and this 15 t plus 10 represents your velocity function that's it this right here is your velocity function and now all you have to do to find the final velocity vf is equal to velocity at time what's the time interval involved 15 seconds right you this right here is a function you're just putting an input to get your output velocity at time 15 seconds which will measure your final velocity will be 15 times 15 plus 10 and you know that this is just function inputs so that's all what it is 15 times 15 plus 10 you get 235 meters per second doing here the calculus way not too hard we still get the good answer now let's look at the final position of this object we know if we have a velocity function right and we do its integral we end up at the position function that's the loop i was talking about at the very beginning what is my velocity function is right here 15 t plus 10 i just have to integrate 15 t plus 10 
with regards to dt because everything here is with regards to the time variable 15t will come out as a 15t squared over 2 right t n plus 1 over n plus 1 10 will come out as a 10t and this right here will equal my position function to find the final position at time 15 seconds all you have to do is treat this as a function with an input position at time 15 is equal to 15 times 15 squared which is the input right here you're putting the input of 15 over 2 plus 10 times 15 and you just compute this it should match very well that and it does we get a final position of 1837.5 meters we can say due east and this right here is the final answer here's my final velocity here's my final position everything matching what we had here the two ways the algebra the physics way which you're using the basic formulas or you're doing the integral calculus way. Remember, keep in mind all of these formulas you're looking at very well in physics. All of this was derived using calculus and it has been done so from the time of antiquity. Everything over here, all these physical phenomena are very well described using integral calculus and a differential calculus. I do have two videos posted on how I show you these formulas are derived and of course the other main formula of linear motion you know that one vf square minus v0 square is equal to 2as we have the formula derivation of this as well in the video that everything you know or you've learned in terms of physics using algebra and physics equations you can very well do so using calculus the benefit of only doing it this way is it makes you think of it in a different way and the minute these type of questions get more difficult these types of procedures become tricky or confusing and then doing it the calculus way is easy because you know you have that loop you're going from the position to the velocity to the acceleration in terms of the derivatives and then you're going from the acceleration to the velocity to the position in terms of the integral the reverse procedure and that's it stay tuned for videos coming your way more videos like this thank you for watching have a nice day